It's a Gibson, 1994 Centennial Howard Roberts Fusion. It's here for a setup because it's been a while since it's had a setup done. Uh, I'm told over five years ago. Um, yeah, so it definitely needs a setup, but it, it also needs some other work. Uh, I discovered some issues with uh, the nut and some major issues with the fret nibs. So why don't we uh, look at all those details first and then we'll talk about what the guitar needs. Well, I got something real interesting for you today. Okay, but before we get into it, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, when I hold a Gibson, I want it to feel like a Gibson. So what makes it feel like a Gibson? The fret nibs. So in case you don't know what the fret nibs are, why don't I show you? And then you'll know. Here, I'm gonna zoom in. And here it is. This is a fret nib. Yeah, I know I need to polish my frets. Uh, yeah, so this is basically part of the binding. Um, and it's the way the guitar is built. Gibson guitars are known for their fret nibs. I like fret nibs, but they can cause issues as we're about to see. Uh, uh, speaking of issues, this guitar has a few of those. Uh, and it was one of those guitars that was brought in for a setup. Yeah, I just need a setup. Nothing more. Well, maybe. So, uh, I looked at the guitar, and now I'm discussing other services with the customers. With the customer. There's one customer. Uh, yeah, it's late again. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Well, welcome back to Guitar Quackery, and uh, why don't we have a look at the guitar? The guitar is on the bench, uh, so we want to have a close look at the guitar. Uh, first of all, because it's a good looking guitar. Uh, we also want to look at some of the setup specs, which obviously are adjustable. But we also want to have a close look at some of the issues that I found that we want to fix. So. The guitar uh, has a, an ebony fretboard. Uh, it's an arched up guitar, hollow body, two humbucker pickups with uh, gold plated covers. Uh, so all the, all the hardware is gold plated. Um, it's a natural style bridge and a unique tailpiece with uh, micro tilt adjustments for each individual string. So why don't we look at that first uh, here? Um, when you tighten this, it basically pushes the string down, which adjusts the brake angle across the saddle, all right? And this can be done for each individual string. Um, okay, obviously they're at different lengths for whatever reason, sympathetic sounds, or maybe that's the theory. I don't know. I found loose hardware, okay? Uh, so, uh, these components were loose, uh, so if they're loose on the outside, they're also loose on the inside. And on the inside, we have solder joints, and those don't like to be moved. So, we're going to have to uh, pull them out and check the solder joints and then tighten them properly. I also Notice that the output jack is loose. I can turn it like this. So obviously it moves every time the guitar is used. And we want to check those solder joints as well. Um, here, we want to have a peek at this. Okay. It's a 1994 special serial number. 1994 Centennial. Gibson changed uh, their serial number. Um, codes uh, just for that one year centennial year uh yeah ebony fretboard now we see some tool marks uh on the ebony fretboard from the factory that's a little bit of a, a sloppy factory work so now if we look at the frets we can see that um 
there's a lot of flatness to the frets. Uh, you can see the uh, mirror reflection of the string. It looks like a straight line. The frets are flat. And this shifts the point of vibration towards the bridge, which uh, is probably one of the reasons why these saddles, why the tech, the previous tech, attempted to dial in the intonation by moving the saddles all the way back. Uh, of course, you can never get a true intonation when the frets are flat because the knot is still in the correct position. Um, I did notice that these uh, first couple of frets, maybe the, just the first fret, is not flat on top. It does have some fret wear. We can see some dimples here and here. Um, and, you know, a little bit of fret wear here, but a lot of flatness, okay? So we can never achieve a good setup with frets like this. Um, now, uh, in the 1990s, Gibson, you know, did not really crown the frets after leveling because uh, crowning takes a long time. They didn't have a plaque machine yet. So, you know, uh, we see a lot of Gibson guitars from that era with frets that are kind of flat. All right. Now, let's look at the um, relief of the neck. Why not? Uh, so the relief of the neck is measured. Well, I measure it on the eighth fret and I, uh, I keep the guitar on the bench, not in playing position. I always do it the same way, okay? But I make sure that I put the neck rest all the way at the heel of the neck so that I don't add additional relief to the neck. Okay, makes sense. Here are feeler gauges. Uh, that's a set. Um, now, I already measured the relief. So here we're going to look at this one, which is 8 one thousandths of an inch. And we're going to look at this one, which is 11 one thousandths of an inch. Okay. Uh, with a straight edge across the fretboard, we measure the gap that remains between the 8th fret and the straight edge. So 8 one thousandths of an inch passes through. The next one does not. So we know that this gap is at least 8 one thousandths of an inch, but not as much as 11, maybe somewhere in between. Okay. So that's our measurement on, on the base side. Now, when we transfer uh, the straight edge over to the treble side, we want to take the same measurement and see if it's any different. 8 one thousandths of an inch passes. The next one, 11, does not. So what does this mean? Well, it simply means that uh, our neck relief is symmetrical on both sides, which is a good thing. So no issues there. Now we want to look at the nut. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit like this. And let's have a look at uh, the nut relief. Now, uh, what do I call the nut relief? Well, if you measure the uh, height of the string from the first fret to the bottom of the string, that's called the action height. But the relief is different. It's the little gap that remains when you push the string against the second fret. So here we have a little gap between the sixth string, the E, low E string, and the first fret. Uh, on the A string, we have a gap. On the D string, we have a gap. On the G string, we have a gap. But on the B, no gap remains. And on the high E, no gap remains. And 
this filler gauge is really, really thin. It's uh, two one hundredths of a millimeter. Okay, this is a metric uh, filler gauge. It's onion skin thickness. So uh, I do not detect a gap there. I don't even detect the gap when I do a tap test, when I just push the string against the second fret and tap it against the first fret. But uh, there is no string buzz when I play the E, the high E and the B strings. So I guess we're good. But I did discover some other issues with the nut, which we want to look at. First, we want to look at the side of the nut. Okay. When, uh, when I rotate the guitar like this, let's place it here. Okay. Just make sure the guitar doesn't fall. That would be really bad. And here. I, uh, we are zoomed in. Well, actually, let's zoom in all the way. Not all the way, but a little more. So we see some damage. Uh, so when I see this, I want to know if the nut was removed. And we see a little crack here as well on the finish. Uh, so how would we uh, know if the nut was removed? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the guitar over. And I'm going to look at the base side of the nut. This is the same nut, obviously, on the base side. But uh, it doesn't look like we have the same kind of finish damage. So I would say that the nut was not removed. But we're going to talk about that finish damage because... Uh, that's related to some other issues that I found. All right. Since we have the guitar here, I do want to show you a, a briefly show you a, a little detail. Um, this is the A string, and as you can see, we see um, some hardened super glue right here on the side so this would tend to indicate that uh, someone attempted to fill the string slot to fix it so let's uh remove the string and let's look at the string slot we need to focus now I can see that there's a filling there and I can also see that it already chipped off at the front here and it was not properly filled all the way to the back. Obviously this is a little sloppy and we don't know what kind of filling this is. Uh, we can also see that uh, it was filled over uh, whatever this is, either metal deposits or a lubricant that was used for the strings. Um, we'll look at the knot a little closer in a moment, but since we're here, uh, let's look at those frets. <clears throat> what I see here is that uh, this is not a factory Gibson fret polish, okay? They never polish the frets to a mirror shine at the Gibson factory. Uh, so this was done by a tech, right? And yeah, and here we see those dimples, okay? That we already talked about. And if I move the guitar in this direction, let me refocus. We can see a lot of flatness on the frets right here, okay? which is really not uh, which is really not my favorite thing to see. 
I'm going to move the guitar over in this direction and we want to talk about the fret nibs and we are also going to have a closer look at uh, the string slots on the nut. But let's first talk about those fret nibs because those are uh, my bigger concern because they're, they're not easy to fix but we do need to do something about them. Uh, here, uh, we're looking at a fret nib, okay? This is the second fret on the base side. And what do we see? We see a little crack, and we also see a little hump, okay? So this happens when the wood shrinks over time, but obviously the middle fret does not shrink. So because the binding is glued to the side of the fretboard, now the fret is hitting the binding from the inside and is forcing the, the binding out. And we see this typical crack on Gibson guitars caused by this issue, which is called fret sprout. And when it's severe, we can see even separation right here between, we can kind of see a little crack there between the fretboard and the binding. If I move over to the third fret, we see a similar situation, okay? But now let's move over to the first fret. And here we can clearly see that the fret nib broke off. It broke off completely. All right, so we're, we're missing real estate there. Now let's move over to the treble side. And we can see that on the treble side, the fret nib broke off. That's the first fret. The second fret is about to fall off. Uh, we see a fracture all the way down and we see, uh, well, this is a, you know, we call it cheese. We call it fret cheese. It's a mixture of, you can imagine what, over the years. But um, this is going to break off. It's just a matter of time. That's the second fret. Third fret is also at risk of uh, breaking off. And it's got a deep fracture on the uh, side. And we move over to the fourth fret. And here we can clearly see that the fret nib broke off. And there's even a, a fracture extending down in this direction. Okay. So this is uh, the biofilm. Okay. This is the fourth fret. Now here we're looking at the fifth fret. Same situation. Sixth fret. Uh, now, the further up the neck you go, the more chance that the string slips when you play. And I think that this is what actually caused some, at least some of the fret nibs to break off completely after uh, they develop these fractures through the binding, okay? Here we see the same situation and the same situation here. So this is, uh, I lost count, this is the eighth fret, okay? The eighth fret with a deep fracture on the side. The ninth fret, the fret nib is missing. And here we're looking at the 10th fret. So let's talk about this fret, the fret nib. There's a little gap there. The string can get caught there, especially around the 10th fret. And, you know, with, with a little strumming and a little more aggressive playing, when we 
get into the, you know, music, it's just a matter of time when the string is going to break it off. The 11th fret, same situation. 12th fret, also not good. 13th fret is better. Okay, but we do have that fracture going down the fret. Uh, I'm sorry, down, down the side of the binding. All right. So now let's focus on the nut right there. Let me just refocus. And here we go. Uh, this is the low E string. If we look at the side, we can see some residue here. So we definitely want to look inside the string slot. And maybe even zoom in a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. There's a filling there. And once again, it's not the best filling. Um, they filled it over dirt, whoever did this. Now, this is the uh, A string, which is already loose. So let's just remove it. And let's look at this. It's a filling, clearly. We can clearly see that. Uh, and again, it's filled over uh, metal residue right there. Doesn't go all the way to the back and it's chipped off at the front. Okay. I don't know what this is here. The D string. This looks better. But let's look at the bottom of the string slot. I don't think there's a filling there. But as you can see, the nut was cut straight, but the Gibson headstock uh, does not uh, have this, you know, the strings don't go straight through towards the tuning post. So, so here we have uh, this side wear and tear, which is okay as long as the uh, string stays in tune. We have the G string right here. We want to have a peak. Okay, and not too bad. I don't know if the string stays in tune or not. I haven't checked the guitar. Um, and here, the B string. First, it's cut too deep, so you, you can't really, um, well, I mean, this surface is too high, all right? So you can't really cut a good string slot for a Gibson headstock if uh, the string slot is so deep. I also think that two different size files were used for this one, maybe by two different techs at two different times in the past 30 years, okay? And here we have the high E string. Same thing. Um, I believe that two, probably two different techs cut the string slot at two different times using two different size files. Okay. So what's the conclusion? Obviously, um, I'm going to recommend some services for this guitar. Obviously, I'm going to recommend more than just a setup. Um, the guitar needs at least uh, some kind of fret dressing. Um, I'm not really sure if it requires a full level crown and polish, but um, some spot leveling definitely, recrowning, uh, because we want to make sure that the frets aren't flat on top, so we, we can do a good setup, uh, dial in the good intonation, 
and a better polish than what we see here. But how do we do this with the missing fret nibs? So I'm going to recommend fret nib repair. And obviously, I'm going to recommend some work on the nut. Um, so this is um, a bigger project than just a setup. But the guitar has a really good potential, so I think it's really worth it. I usually do these assessments with the customer present, but sometimes I do it over Zoom, and sometimes I make a recorded video, like the one you just watched. This was an actual assessment that was recorded for this actual customer and was sent to this customer to watch. So now we're discussing options and I'm going to do a full service on this guitar. And there might be another video, a follow-up video of the actual services that you know I'll be doing on the guitar. Um, yeah, we'll see. But how do you find out? Well, you click the subscribe button, right? And then you'll be notified. Now, if you feel that this helped you out in any way, uh, make sure you help others. So click the share button. And also, you can share this video on social media or on guitar forums. Just put a link to it, and that helps everyone including this channel so i can make more videos such as this one obviously uh you can also click some links below uh to help the channel you can buy me a coffee just click the link that says buy me a coffee thank you very much you can buy guitar quackery merch and what else yeah just check those links oh yeah uh, there's a link to the patreon page thank you and i'll see you soon